Hi, Dani. Welcome to the Rope Reglas podcast. How are you? Good. Gracias, gracias for having me on here. Oh my gosh, I love, love, love just being on here and uh, your energy. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Mm, awesome. Well, to those listening, Daniela is an award-winning clairvoyant photographer. She helps women connect to their eternal forms and capture the beauty of their transformations in raw and cathartic images. And if you've seen any of these images, they're amazing. Um, she acts as a conduit between your eternal blueprint and your present consciousness, holding space for you to cross safely into the life you are meant to live. Um, and Dani, the pictures that I've that I've seen online are just um, they're really full of magic. Can you can you tell me and the listeners a little bit about like how you approach your work? Yes, thank you. Every time I hear that description, I'm like, I <laughs> that is me. That's oh so awesome, you know. And you like hear somebody speak your your, your truth, and you're like, oh yeah, my body's like all tingly. So thank you for that. Um, um, yeah, my magic really has been. Um, I think in surrendering has been the most most. I think that I can I can uh, equivalent my my starting of having this magical experience in my life has been just to surrender and trust in in all of it right in in source and the universe and god you know whatever you equivalent that uh trust to um and for me it's really been such a beautiful journey to get to this space that i'm in currently it's been a wild one mama <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so tell us a little bit about the journey, you know, you know, clearly you're a very spiritual person. And I just want to name for the listeners that, you know, usually when I invite people on the podcast, I've, I've either like been with them in a healing ceremony and things like that. And I, I haven't with you, Dani um, or Daniela. Um, so, and I've been really tempted to go on one of your solography trips um, but haven't yet. And so I'm coming into this a little bit like not knowing you as much as some of the other people that I've had on here. So I really want to invite you to share your journey and um, especially coming into your your clairvoyance, your connection to spirit, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so my connection to my clairvoyance has been... Um, it's been beautiful because my parents were both very young when they had me. Um, and my mom, even though, you know, uh, my background, my, both of my parents are from Chile and our background, um, you know, we were all baptized Catholic, but um, in the background, we were always having, you know, a Santeria or like, like a lending of the house, you know? Um, and my mom, was really into Losan Rampa, which is, um, you know, a teacher in, in Buddhism that really talked about the soul um, and the third eye and all of those things, um, you know, actually elevating through um, your soul to other places and telepathically communicating. Um, so I always joke around that I'm probably, I was probably the only six-year-old who knew about the third eye and was like talking about like, yeah, my third eye, my third eye senses this. So I was always <laughs> talking about my feelings. Um, my mom was and my dad were always super open with me. And, you know, I started to see spirit and see um, ghost, if you could say that, yeah. um, very early on. And my dreams would, my mom kind of knew that I had something special when my dreams would always um, become a reality. Like my mom would be like, okay, that mean like, so if there anything bad happens in your dreams, don't tell me because, it would always come true. So mm. ever since then, like my mom just wanted me to explore and to 
be um, really playful with it. Never, you know, um, afraid of it. Always saying like, you know, don't go too far because, you know, all the things in the black, sometimes she would talk about um, the bad spirits and the good spirits. But um, yeah, my mom was really, really open. So I was really lucky to have both of my parents, both mom and dad, who was were believers who talked about it in a very open way my cousins you know my cousins would come up from chile to stay with us for a little bit they were all about so we would have dinners for hours and hours and hours talking about different experiences that we all had whether it was something moving or whether somebody was you know asking you in the middle of the night and bothering you to, to like listen to them you know um there is this one story with my mom I had seen a spirit at my uncle's house and I said mommy do you see is my aunt you know I was very little and I said is my aunt like at uh, inside the house and my mom's like no what are you talking about it's all dark and I was like oh okay you know it does it and this was the first um spirit that I saw and so um I had come home we had all come home and this spirit who I seen came, you know, came and bothered me in the middle of the night and was waking me up until I finally said like, all right, like, if you want to talk to me, talk to me, but don't keep on waking me up. And so, um, <laughs> and so she left. And the next day I told my mom, the following night, the spirit came and bothered my mom. And my mom's like, okay, if you're not going to talk, please shoo shoo. You know? <laughs> so it was really so beautiful of an experience to be that open. Um, and in my life, I think that that has held me in my spirituality of always being guided and knowing that there is something beyond, um, beyond us and feeling spirit all around us, being able to communicate and being able to communicate with my guides and other people's guides and um, ancestors, you know, I've been able to connect with ancestors and everything. So I think my whole life has been um, at least what I call like in this in between magic um, because, you know, for me, it, it's been so easy to drop into people's essences and seeing their path and really speaking to their higher, their higher self. Um, Many times I've been, you know, because I don't see the darkness so much in people and I can really drop into that higher self. Um, I have to, you know, balance both, you know, knowing that the person's higher self is always going to be the higher self, but the humanness is also, is also there. So there's always been that balance of like, you know, the world is so beautiful. Look at the rainbows. I was always the little girl who was like, I just want everybody to be holding hands and if it be peace and, you know, so um, fast forward, I'm 43 years old now and I still, I'm still yearning and wanting the same things. I'm still the girl who is like, let's just like see each other for who we are and never be envious or jealous we're all here for a purpose and let's just find our own purpose you know and 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 not not be afraid of somebody else's light because all of us have that light so mm -hmm. that's where that journey came from and the photography really came into play I would say really really after my divorce it was um you know, I was in a relationship for 17 years and married for 10 years. And um, it wasn't really that uh, very healthy relationship. So when I got out of that relationship, I really, really wanted to focus on empowering and empowering myself and empowering other women and talking about beauty because I was in my early, about mid thirties, early thirties, I had two babies already. And you know what, my body after having two babies, I was like, okay, like this is not the same as it was pre kids. And, um, and I just found it to be so liberating to be able to be in my own skin and, you know, forgive myself for for all the things that have happened for, you know, being in a, in a relationship in an abusive relationship for such a long time. And 
um, you know, getting out, but there is so much forgiveness that I had to go through um, in order to, to be okay with, with who I am now. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, through that, I started this project that was called um, Real Beauty Uncovered. And oh my gosh, mommy, like that project was like heart and soul. Um, it was talk about divine and listening and trusting and surrendering. That project came to me in, in, at a coffee house. I remember um, already divorced. The, the ex wasn't so great with, you know, money. I had been a stay home mom for a little bit for while I was, I was married. Um, and then, you know, being at this coffee house and saying like, like I have to do something in order to empower myself and not let anything like this ever happen again to another woman, mm. or at least have a space where, we, where there is communication of, of all of beauty, of abuse, of cancer, of all the things that we need to talk about. So Real Beauty came out, it just, it was birth like in, in an hour when I asked, you know, please, you know, ancestors, guides, universe, please help me in this quest because I know that this is mine. Like I went through all these things in my life so that I can be presented this opportunity to use my art and the way that I can communicate to people and use this as a, as, as service. Basically for me, I asked like, use me as, mm -hmm. as a channel or as a, whatever you need as your servant. Yes. So, um, so I immediately, you know, I'm a very much action girl. <laughs> So I immediately was like, oh my gosh, this is brilliant. I love this. I'm going to see if the gallery that I had photographed the year before um, wants to display it. Like I literally don't have any money because the money that I had was just to pay for the, the rent and for the food for the kids. Um, like I was really scraping by at that point. And um and I went and I talked to, I, I basically went into this space. It wasn't a gallery anymore. And it ended up being um, a therapist's office with this amazing woman who believed in everything that I, I was saying and was like, right, this is, sounds amazing, but I'm in a session right now. <laughs> let me give you a call back. Um, and that's where that project kind of shot out because, you know, she had a connection to another woman who was, who is amazing, um, in Montclair and it just, it went from there. It went to Montclair state university, to the white house, to museums. Like it was, this project was everywhere. I went to schools, to high schools, to talk to young students about beauty and their bodies and all the things, um, women's centers that were, that just inspired them to be, you know, that they can do it and, and do anything in their life. So um, it's been so beautiful. And then, you know, a, a couple years in, they had asked me, some of the women asked me, Dani, you know, we really loved how we felt. It was so empowering and having a conversation with you for an hour was so transitional that what can we do? How can we work together? So um, I didn't know what to say, you know, and, and I didn't know how to help. So I took a year off of sabbatical of photography. Like I, I kind of let that go really centered and, and listen to myself and listen to the answers, not asking anybody what should be done, just really searching for my answers from within. Um, and I took, I went into um, life coaching, like I got a certificate for life coaching. Mm -hmm. I also got a certificate for um, hypnosis. And I thought that that was the answer. I was like, okay you know, clean. Okay. I'm going to go and do, I'm going to be a life coach. Of course. Like this is the answer. I'm just going to follow the breadcrumbs. 
Um, and in those following those breadcrumbs, I had a session with this goddess with breath work and became a clear, like complete clear channel, as you know, breath work does. It's like yes. so beautiful. Um, and my ancestors came in so strong, so, so strong that I still feel them like right now when I'm, when we're talking and they showed me the wild woman. They showed me the, my voice. They showed me, uh, you know, how, even though I had healed so much and have helped so many women that I still needed to heal my own voice and to be able to howl at the moon and be able to voice whatever I needed to voice that I still was, I still needed the healing of that wild woman to come through. Um, and they showed me the photography, like they showed me the mud and, you know, there's still a couple of things that I haven't, um, I haven't done that the vision showed me, but there was like colored, colored mud, you know, that there was all different colors, like hot pinks and blues and greens. And the women were holding these, these muds and putting it on their body. And it's just been, it's been to follow that image and to follow what my ancestors showed me has been the catalyst to what has happened in my life. Like mm -hmm. I can, I, I always say to people, if you follow your passion and you don't do so much of your head of how it's going to work, I promise you that it's always you're always going to be supported I mean Dani what was that moment like when you were shown all when you became a clear channel and were, and were shown all of these things like what what were the next steps that you took and and you know I understand what you're saying in terms of like trust and surrender because that is such a it's it feels like the foundation of so much of our creative and purposeful work Mm -hmm. um, I think it, I just wanted to comment on how amazing it is that you had supportive parents who saw your gifts, who nurtured them, who taught you how to play with them. And that, that, that is such a foundation to being able to take the next steps after having a vision or having been shown things. So what were those initial steps like for you? And you had already been in photography. So, yeah, yeah. Um, my, I think that the first step was just um, feeling the sadness of not, not seeing this sooner, right? Because we go through that period of like, oh, it, like it was right in front of me. Like I've been, like I literally had been feeling this pull for years to do photography that way, right? So it was like, like how can I not have listened before right but we don't know what we don't know so that was you know the the forgiveness of being able to to know that when I was shown exactly how I knew that it was time for me to do this kind of photography that it was you know it was this is the time like yeah. before that there were nudges and maybe I would have been able to follow it, but this was like a clearness of, yes, like this is it, like yeah. this, like right here. This is the <laughs> this is the way they're gonna. It's gonna work. Like this is what you're gonna do. Just bring the women to water and put mud all over them. You know, it was like basically, you know, they show me. They, show, they like it was like okay, I'm gonna lay everything out for you. I, we've been trying to nudge. It's like trying to give you clues, but Vanny, you're so stubborn, <laughs> you know, it's like, and, and then it's like, okay, I get it. I get it. Okay. I forgive myself, you know? Um, and so for me, it was really um, having those steps. And then again, really taking action because by that time, I, uh, again, I just feel like I've been really lucky at being able to trust and surrender and to have those people around me that can, that would support. So at that time, I already knew a couple of life coaches who were, you know, beautifully spiritual and um, 
my, you know, my sisters. And so I called them and said, you know, um, I had a vision and this is my vision. Would you, would you be interested in a photo shoot with mud all over? <laughs> like, and they're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> yes, Nani, like, of course, this is so great. So it was really this beautiful kind of, again, just asking and surrendering to whoever said yes for it to be, you know, I think that that's really the clue too, to not stop just because somebody says no. Right. And to also just follow who says yes. Like if somebody, somebody's going to find your medicine, like there's, there's so much, there's a lot of people out there. And like I always say, there's so many photographers who even do the same things that I do. There's other, you know, things that are called, not maybe called wild woman, but that do very similar things. But my medicine is definitely different than her medicine. So the people are going to find whoever they need to find. So um, then I started taking pictures. It started off with, with, the clairvoyant incident really, like, I wasn't verbal about the clairvoyance until 2020, because, yeah. of course, 2020, yes. I'm like, oh, like, what do I do? I can't take pictures. Like, how do I do this? So, it, you know, I took pictures, and then obviously 2020 hit, and so I really had to explore what I did in the photo shoot and completely take it apart. Wow. And then really come out and say, like, this is what I've always done. And this is why my photographs, when you see them, it's an energetic imprint because during the session, it's all energetic for me. Like I'm a, I'm a conduit, right? And I'm also an energy giver. So there's really um, an imprint that happens during the photo shoot that the energy the, the goddess's energy is imprinted into the, the photograph. So it just, it, I had to really be open with my gifts and not be, not be hi hiding behind my photography. Cause it was always like, Oh, I'm a photographer. Right. It was always, the photography was always first. And my guides were like, no, 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 no. Um, it's your clairvoyance. Like but the photography part is like that special gift that they get at the end. Yeah. That they get to see how they've transitioned throughout the day and they get to have that as their forever gift so that they can look back on. But the gift is the day that you get to be the channel and they get to receive all the love. And it's like a clear channel to the god or goddess or source like however it comes through me that they get to feel what it's like to be um engulfed in lo in love this is it's so amazing to hear you say that because <clears throat> i've also hidden sort of the magic pieces of what i do like and, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm a psychotherapist or I'm a coach or I'm a healer. But yeah, like what's actually happening while we're talking, I don't talk about. Right. And it's so interesting that you say like 2020, right? When like when when we hit that wall, when we're when we hit some sort of impasse, we ha we have to bring different parts of ourselves or we have to get creative about how we talk about our craft and. And what, what are the pieces, right? What are the pieces of our craft? And, and I love how you describe this process of, and what I'm hearing you say is like, it's the experience of the day of being in your energy, of being like having energy given to the participant or the muse. And, and then also maybe seeing themselves the way that you see them in their higher selves, in their goddess, in their divinity, right? Like having it um, like proof or yeah. some sort of evidence of like, this is who I am, right? That they can see themselves through your eyes. Yes, a hundred percent. And that's what happens. It's like, you know, at the end when they get to see those pictures, like, you know, for me, I get a lot of visual. So I'm a very visual person. Like I, I 
sometimes taste, I sometimes smell, like I get all the senses, but my strongest is my visual. So when I meet somebody and they, I, I, you know, it's, it becomes an open portal. I get to see them in their higher self. So their higher self, like that picture is already presented to me, right? So at the end, so we go through a journey and I really believe even through um, the journey really starts off. And I believe that we all have um, one um, archetype that we are, that is our center. So that we get to play in like a lover or a queen, you know, or the gesture, but that we all come down with one throughout each and every lifetime so that we can center back to ourselves, center back to that soul. Right. And so my, my work and what I've been channeled through is really bring out that center of that archetype. So the journey goes from, you know, I'm working with a goddess um, right now who's, who's really comfortable in her child, but her main, what, uh, what was shown to me was that her main archetype is the lover. So mm -hmm. that, you know, now we're, 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 we're starting off with a child, right? Mm -hmm. But we're by the end, it's going to be that she, because her child, she puts away when the lover comes in, which is like, like some childhood trauma, right? Mm -hmm. So bringing in the playfulness of the child to be incorporated with the lover so that her essence and her magic is, is felt even stronger, right? And not putting away that lover for when the lover wants to come out, not putting away that child when, you know, when it's incorporating both and letting that both archetypes live within. So but that healing yeah. integration process that happens through the journey of the photography. Exactly. Yeah. There's so, there's a lot, like there's so many components there. Um, but it's just so beautiful because at the end of it, all of the women that have been through the wild, uh, the wild woman experience um, have all felt empowered to go back to that main archetype that has been shown to me. Mm -hmm. It's like they soften into that, whether it's the warrior or the lover or the child or the queen, you know, all the archetypes that we get to play with. There are some in there that I, that are definitely not like I do feel the witch and all the archetypes that are not mentioned in the 12 archetypes. Um, but we get to play in that space, yeah. you know, and, and then at the end you get to embody that, that archetype fully. And <clears throat> that's amazing. I love it. And for the people who are listening, like when you, when I see some of the images that you post and some of the videos, I mean, the, the dresses that you choose, I mean, there's a whole, there's a whole process. There's a whole, I don't know, maybe you can talk a little bit more about that, about choosing specific things to wear. And I mean, there's, it's, it's very elaborate and it's also like on in different destinations. Yeah. All over the world. Yeah, all over the world. And I I actually did that because um, it was funny because I started I started my photography kind of locally. Um, and I was getting a sense of like, I gotta I gotta pull these goddesses out of their out of their zone so that it's like a whole it's like not like you're in your backyard and taking pictures I need to pull them away so that they give themselves that space yes to really drop incorporate in. and in, and drop in into everything that's going to be happening during the day right yep. so I do have a stylist who comes in who incorporates all these and because I said like these visions that come there's a mood board that's created with all of the things that are going to be incorporated during the day. Um, like we do three types of archetypes. So that means three types 
of, of dressing. So some of the archetypes are in this, like if the lover comes in, you know, that the lover wants to be in this really big, elaborate, you know, kind of dress. And sometimes the lover wants to be in a very sensual, you know, um, body corset or something. So it really depends on the woman who's dropping in is how the, the, the vision is incorporated and especially in the styling part. Um, you know, the stylist is really, it's, it, she's, amazing and she gets to kind of feed into the the mood board but also to her own intuition and for me it's really important to be working with people that are around me that are intuitive as well yep. because of all the energy that is happening during the day that it's a it's almost like a clear channel for them as well so that I can be like put all of my energy towards the goddess um and then, you know, for me, it's also like beforehand, we also do some energy work and connect and really go in and feel into all the chakras, clear anything out that doesn't, that is, is no longer needed, bring in the guides to help me and drop them into the space of, um, of who they are so that they can feel themselves, not only just see themselves, but really in this meditation. Yes. feel themselves so it's really like I start and that's why sometimes my photography like I do six months out or 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 three months out um no less than that sometimes a year out I work with goddesses that are a year out um just because of the energy work and 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 sometimes they need a little bit more um to get to that space yeah right yeah so that's the whole process. And then the day is just, you know, we do all the work kind of beforehand so that the day we get to enjoy it, like, you know, go and, and explore, get into water, be, you know, wherever the channeling comes in, that's another part of, of um, this beautiful experience is that I really do channel beforehand the places that um that I'm gonna go next the, the following year or two years out mm -hmm. so it's by towards the end of the year like in November I I do my ritual of like where does where is the medicine next year or in two years right so they you know they drop in and they say like oh you know wherever like I have a whole map and it's like okay tell me where I need to where I need to go and then I they I pick some places and that's what I advertise and the people who are who are either interested or yearning that's where they go like whether it's this year Tulum was and Hawaii have been really really strong Mm -hmm. So Tulum and Hawaii are my next ones. Like, you know, whoever wants to come to those areas and want to work with me and, and feel that medicine in those areas, then they come and we rent a house. We have, you know, I usually do three to to three to five women, but yeah. we rent a house all together and then we pick a day and then, you know, we get to enjoy the time that we're in that house together and you get to enjoy your day and and also explore when you're not being photographed. What has been your, your favorite location? What has been sort of the most magical place? Oh, um, I think California. California has been like, it's so, because I think it, it was the first place that I, I remember going out there for, um, for a shoot and it was like the first time that I was pulled out of my area and kind of said like I really want you to come out to California and and um that land really I think it was and it was the mountains like I haven't been able to go back home um in a really long time so you know California Ge geographically does represent so much of of Chile and the mountains and yeah. um that whole area has been so magical to me so mm -hmm. I think California I think the next one though is probably gonna be um Tulum
sorry about that. Okay. No, it's okay. It's probably going to be in Tulum just because um, when I was doing my my certi uh, my certification for hypnosis, um, we had a practice on each other. So one of the women who was asking me, you know, we had life past life regressions. And I had this wild experience of going back into, into the Mayan. Um, and I just saw everything like that was like, it's been, I've been so afraid of going back there. Like it's been a real, and this was years ago that I had this experience. Um, it was ex experience of like the first time that I felt abandoned. Mm. Right? And it was like in this, in this past life regression my my husband my lover my partner um was leaving for war or something like he was just leaving for some kind of battle yeah and um I was afraid and he said to me don't worry I'm gonna be back I'm not gonna ever let you go and I just felt you know he never came back I felt abandoned I felt you know, he was, he lied and all the things. And I think, I feel like that was the moment where I had, there's been a, a lot of abandonment stuff in my life, but I think that that was the moment that that first abandonment wound came about. Yes. And so now like years later, I, I feel ready to go back to Tulum and just explore that whole part and just to to land in that space and see what happens, see what my body remembers, see if there's anything that it remembers or, you know, just go back to the areas that I saw in my, in my vision. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. So beautiful. Like, you know, as you are facilitating these journeys for these other women, you get to be on your own journey as well. Yes. A hundred percent. So, so Dani, where how can people find you and tell us like what your next projects are? Cause I know you've got some things in the works. Yeah. Um, so people can always find me on Instagram. Um, I, I recently changed it to, I am Danny McDonald. Um, Danny McDonald's. It's so funny. Cause people are like, I'm like, McDonald is my husband's, is my husband's Irish name. They're like, why didn't you pick Ireland to go to? Is it because you're Irish? I'm like, no, it's because it just called me. And <laughs> I think it has medicine for me too. So we'll just see when we get there. Um, so you can find me on Instagram. Instagram has like my website and all those informational kind of yummy things that you can see other other, other people's pictures and videos. Um, and the next couple projects are really, you know, Tulum is coming up. I have three spots open and, and so is Hawaii towards the, in, towards the end, end of the year. Um, that's going to be November. Tulum is in October. And then for next year, you know, for me, um, Chile has been calling me for such a long time. So I am the retreat that was supposed to be this year, which was Ireland, we moved to next year. Okay. So that's in, um, that's going to be in June and we still have one spot open. So I'm like, you know, so anybody who's interested, like, please let me know. It's going to be beautiful. We're staying in a castle. It's just going to be like, that. oh my gosh, <laughs> like, yes, in a castle. So beautiful. Um, but then we're also, I'm also going back to Chile. We're going to be staying in uh, Valle de Elqui, which is more south of, I'm horrible with directions. So the south of, of um, it's close to La Serena. And it's going to be more, I work with chakras a lot. So yeah. the, Ireland, the Ireland feels more like the higher chakras, like the crown and, you know, all those. And Chile is more like the lower your root, my, you know, your root and your sacral yes. um, and solar plex. So we're going to be working a lot. I'm going to be bringing a shaman in. It's just going to be, it's going to be very earthy and, and, um, you know, my heritage, my indigenous heritage is Mapuche. So we're going to start bringing in more ceremonial Mapuche things, um, into the mix at that retreat. So, 
I'm excited about that. And you and I are doing, I'll talk about this year, you and I are doing the first Latina Spiritual Summit together. So I'm so ecstatic about that. I'm just so, so, so excited. That's going to be October 10th, 11th, and 12th. So we're going to be talking all Latina and, and things and spirituality from mm. decolonization to health and wellness, holistic health and wellness. So it's going to be so much fun to be doing that with you. I'm so excited for that. Yes, me too. <laughs> Thank and, you so and much. You have a, and you have one more project <clears throat> that you can speak briefly about that you about in, like talk about indigeneity mm -hmm. with your photography. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Talk about. Um, so, you know, I've been on this beautiful class to really center into um center in can I pause you for one second mm -hmm. can you pause it I'm sorry it's my son I'm sorry so uh yes talk about indigenous projects I've been really 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 trying to get back into my roots and really connecting to that part of my ancestry that you know um has been a little bit lost as well, just connecting back to um, the indigenous part of who I am and what that represents, especially since I have both sides, like indigenous and European. On my dad's side, I have European. On my mom's side, there's indigenous. So um, for me, there was such a need, and especially since I'm a project girl, there was such a need for me to really um, get pictures of all of, of North America and South America indigenous people and tell their story because that's really the purpose of their project is to take their picture, tell their story, um, and then hopefully exhibit them as a unison because mm -hmm. even though we are separated by the North and the South, there's so much there that's just so similar, right? And I think that the medicine even though it's it's different, they're still very much the same in, in the sense of earth and Pachimama and really taking care of of the land and, and the sacredness of the land. So for me that's that's my my long term bigger project that I'm actually starting in Colorado. Um, and I, I couldn't be more excited. Like I'm going to a reservation. I'm taking pictures of two beautiful, beautiful women who are, you know, warriors and, and really talk about decolonization, about indigenous, you know, like all the things that have, have, have happened, the history. So I'm excited to drop in into that space with, with both of them and just listen to them and, and mm -hmm. witness them and, and tell their stories. That sounds so amazing. I, I can't wait to see what, what comes out of that. Mm -hmm. Me too. Me too. There's just so much. And yeah, I was yeah. like, maybe we can do something like, I don't know, like double, like triple exposure. And uh -huh. yeah, so I'm really excited to kind of see what happens and what occurs. Cause I really, I, you know, my pictures are really about telling the story. Right. And, and sometimes telling the story, not in this really magical, like it's, your beautiful way, but in the way that we feel, right? Yeah. And sometimes yeah. those feelings are of anger and sometimes they're of hurt and you cry and or mm -hmm. you're ashamed. So it's really about telling the whole story. It's not just showing the pretty side of it. Yes, right. It's it gets it. to be gritty and it ultimately human, right? Yeah. All the, the range of, of human emotion and experience. Exactly, mm -hmm. all humanness. Mm. Ah, Dani, thank you so much for being here. It was such a pleasure. Thank you so much again. Oh my God, my heart feels so full and I just have enjoyed the spending time with you and your energy. Yes. And, and for the, those who listening, I'm going to include all of the links in the show notes to Dani's solography experiences. And so you can take a look at those. All right, everybody. Bye-bye.